So what does this do to the, our role of managers of people? What do you tell your staff about the outlook, the market, as it changes every day, and the competition? How do you benchmark? How do you set goals? How do you reset goals and reset them again? Retraining the trust with employees and ensuring that they spend time building value instead of worrying about their future. Uh, and look at every sign sort of from an existential perspective is incredibly important. And these are really hard questions. In my mind, there's only one solution. The harder times the co a company has, the more need for quality information at frequent intervals and from the boss. People can generally <coughs> deal with bad information or bad news as long as there's a sense of clarity in the message and confidence in the plan that's sort of put into place to work things out. If the team gets a sense that the CEO has given up or is sort of shaky, CVs will start flying like never before. It happens like, like that. So having significant stakeholders, investors, board members, potential founders who may no longer be as active, walk the floor and talk to the staff is always good. In these troubled times, it's even better. Now, there's a limit to that. You don't want to go around and f sort of go around and holding the fortress, but you just need to do it on a regular basis with programs that people understand. Uh, and consistently. Now, the larger the company, the harder this kind of activity becomes. It does not mean that it's less required. You need to scream, if necessary, to get the resources and the time and the money to facilitate multicasts or whatever your technical solution and convince the CEO, or the divisional CEO, or the regional manager, or whoever is the person of authority, that this is required, and it's required on a very frequent basis. The problem is that they are so stretched that they may not prioritize it. This is where your sort of role and your function as dissenter is an important one. In public companies, the message has, of course, to, have to be sort of tailored and carefully selected, but does not, does not mean that it's not important. Uh, you have to pick very carefully what you can say and not say. And saying something is better than saying nothing. There is nothing as depressing for employees to read about their own company in the press and feel like they know exactly as little as everyone else of the general public. You want to hear bad news, and particularly bad news, from a person of authority in the company you work for. This is sometimes incredibly hard to do. It's sensitive, it's unclear if it's going to happen, this, that, and the other. Things happen very quickly, and it's leaked, blah, blah, blah. Sure, there are lots of good good sort of excuses. But there's no excuse for not trying. And if nothing else, give people the opportunity to come in early. They may not come, but try. All right, I will now walk you through some things. Uh, I'm a little hard on understanding time because we started a bit late. When, what's oh, the? Okay, um, I will just carry on. Okay. So we can shorten the lunch break a little bit. Perfect, okay. Um, I'm going to walk you through some uh, of the things that we do at Love Film as an example. Now, Love Film is not a startup.
It's about 400 people plus 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 uh, in, uh, in the UK, Germany, Scandinavia. And I'm uh, very happy to have with me the HR manager, Kim Stringer, here, uh, who can help us uh, answer some questions. Now, what Love Film does is always tailored to what's, what's necessary for Love Film. So I'm just going to give you like a very quick overview of what they do. I'm, I'm, I'm making a broad assumption that you broadly know what they do. DVD by post, st streaming of, uh, and downloading of films over the internet. In essence, it's a sort of a service for consumers to get to view films and lots and lots and lots of it. It's been uh, an incredible ride since we uh, founded the company um, <coughs> six years ago. And it's been particularly interesting to see how it's grown through the various phases of what's happening out in the landscape. Uh, right now, it's growing like never before. And I think it's because consumers think it's a great value proposition. They like seeing lots of films. People are staying home. Um, so we're seeing that people are watching a lot of films these days. And also, We've fa we, we found after about two or three years, we can demonstrate to the industry that this triggers more cinema attendance. Uh, and that is also a more film consumption in general. And that's something that's very, very important. I'm not going to say much more about the company. But the company consists of, as I said, 400 employees. Roughly speaking, uh, one third working in an office uh, making the interfaces and the and the technology that runs all this, buying the films. You know, we are now one of the largest buyer of buyers of films in Europe. Uh, organizing the all the logistics around all this, and of course the all the customer facing elements. The rest are uh, the lo and the bulk of the employees work in the warehouses. Uh, in Peterborough uh, and, in, and in Germany and Scandinavia, uh, where the, in essence a, a dozen or so trucks come in every morning with uh, up to 250, 300,000 DVDs, they are, they are brought into the warehouse, put into its, their racks and repackaged out and sent out again. Very different types of employees, as you can imagine in need of very different programs. So we have a number of different things that we do on an interval basis. I'm going to start with these. So on a quarterly basis, we have what we call the all hands um, presentations. They are done by the senior executives. Uh, in most, most instances, the CEO, Simon Calver, they're not done at the exact same time. So he will travel to the warehouse to meet with the employees, and in, if need be, in smaller groups to get people in shifts and so on, so everyone gets the opportunity to, to hear and to ask questions. It's very important that you just don't present, and, but also get the opportunity to ask questions. And it's very interesting because some, some uh, of the hourly workers in the warehouse, that job to them is, even, is 10 times as important as one of the professionals in the office. But very often they are sent from very far away uh, as the sort of the brightest from their village and they are the bread earner uh, and send most of their money back home. So for them to keep their job and do a good job is incredibly important and in these markets even more so. Something that people completely underestimate. People think that people just are on an hourly basis are not so important. They are, and for them, this kind of uh, this kind of practices are all, almost always ignored, and it's an absolute shame. So, we would share uh, celebrated uh, sort of successes. Um, we would talk about uh, information that's relevant to them, and um, we would. Uh, initiate new, or we will explain new initiatives about how we're going to do uh, various things. 